landing rockets vertically. That was impossible in 2015. Catching a 70-meter booster with mechanical arms? Completely insane, they said in 2024. Right up until SpaceX actually did it. And now there's this leaked document showing their next move. Landing starship on drone ships out in the middle of the ocean. You know what gets me about the current test flights? Every single time, Starship comes back from orbit perfectly intact. It survives re-entry, executes the flip, engines fire up, everything works. And then they crash it into the ocean on purpose. A hundred million dollars of working hardware, gone. So if they already caught the booster with chopsticks, what's so different about recovering Starship? Look, there's something people keep missing about these Starship flights. The vehicle is surviving everything. I mean everything. We're talking 2,500 degrees during re-entry, plasma wrapping around the entire ship, those massive flaps staying under control the whole way down. The flip maneuver works, the engines relight, the flight computer does exactly what it's supposed to do, and the vehicle hits the water in one piece. That's not a problem. That's proof the design works. They don't need to fix Starship. It already survives the journey. What they need is a place for it to land safely. See the difference? We're not trying to solve, can this vehicle make it back from orbit, because it already does. The real question is, can we build something that can catch it when it comes back? Totally different engineering challenge. SpaceX has been doing drone ship landing since 2016. Over 250 successful catches now with Falcon 9. These ships are about 90 meters long, sitting out there hundreds of miles offshore. And they've gotten so good at this that boosters are flying 15, 20 times each. It looks routine now. But that success? It actually makes people underestimate how hard Starship recovery will be. Falcon 9 boosters come down clean, straight vertical descent, engine first the whole way. They separate at 70 kilometers up, do a quick boost back burn, and drop. The landing burn is maybe three to five seconds. One Merlin engine, 845 kilonewtons of thrust. The booster weighs 25 tons empty. Landing legs pop out, boom, done. And the drone ship knows exactly where to be because the trajectory is predictable. <sighs> Starship? Completely different game. It doesn't just separate and come back. It keeps accelerating to orbital velocity, 17,500 miles per hour. Then it orbits Earth for 90 minutes before coming home. And here's the thing. You can't predict exactly where it'll land until late in the flight. Atmospheric conditions change. Heat shield performance varies. Tiny differences in entry angle. All of that adds up to a landing zone spread across 50, 60 miles. You can't just park a tower there and hope for the best. The drone ship has to move to wherever Starship is coming down, and that's why it stops being optional and becomes absolutely necessary. The physical forces involved, this is where it gets real. Starship stands 50 meters tall, 9 meters wide. Even empty, it's over 100 tons, four times heavier than a Falcon 9 booster. And to land that thing, you're probably running two or three Raptor engines. Each one puts out 2.3 meganewtons of thrust. So, three engines? You're looking at over six meganewtons pointing straight down at the ship's deck. Seven times more thrust than a Falcon 9 landing, for longer. The current drone ships weren't built for that, not even close. The deck, the structure underneath, the keel, none of it was designed to handle what's basically a rocket launch aimed downward. 
and the heat? Three raptors burning methane and oxygen create exhaust temperatures over 3,000 degrees Celsius. Those steel decks on... Then you've got the landing leg problem, and this one's tricky. Falcon 9 has those four deployable legs that handle the 25-ton mass just fine. But Starship? They removed the legs when they decided to catch the booster with tower arms. Made sense at the time. Except now, if you want to land on a drone ship after coming back from orbit, when you don't know exactly where you'll be, you need legs again. Can't just scale up Falcon 9's design either. These legs have to support over 100 tons. They have to deploy after going through 2,500 degree re-entry heating. And they probably need active stabilization because the ship underneath them is moving with ocean swells. Meanwhile, the bottom of Starship is packed. Six Raptor engines, propellant lines, hydraulics for the flaps, structural components. There's barely room as it is. Figuring out where to put landing legs big enough to do the job while keeping the center of gravity stable? That's a real puzzle. The way Starship comes back from orbit makes everything more complicated. It doesn't descend vertically like Falcon 9. It re-enters sideways, belly flop style, using those four big flaps to control the descent and manage heat. That horizontal entry spreads the thermal load across all those heat shield tiles instead of concentrating it in one spot. The flip to vertical only happens in the last 30 to 40 seconds. Recent tests showed that flip at around 500 meters above the ocean. That's not a lot of altitude. The flight computer has to rotate the vehicle, fire the engines, transition to power descent, and nail the thrust profile, all in less time than it takes to read this paragraph. Now put a moving ship under all that. Even in calm seas, that ship is going up and down one to three meters with the swells. It's a moving target. Starship's computer needs real-time position data from the ship, has to predict where the deck will be when it touches down, and continuously adjust engine thrust during the final approach. Two massive objects coordinating in three dimensions, moving way too fast for any human to control. It all has to happen autonomously, and there has to be an abort option if anything goes outside safe parameters. Here's why I'm not worried about whether this works. I'm just curious about when. Everything I just described? The mobile platform, heat-resistant deck, deployable legs, precision guidance, autonomous coordination? None of that requires new physics. It's not material science fiction. It's engineering execution, taking technologies that exist and integrating them in a new way. SpaceX has 10 years of drone ship operations under their belt. They know the maritime side, the positioning systems, the communication requirements, the weather limits. They've made autonomous ocean landings reliable, even with all the uncertainty that comes with working at sea. That knowledge transfers directly, and they move fast when they're iterating on hardware. The Super Heavy Catch system went from concept to working reality in a few years. The heat shield on Starship has evolved rapidly through multiple flights, each test feeding data into the next design. That's their process. Build it. Fly it. Learn from it. Make it better. Most important? The hard stuff is already solved. Starship survives re-entry. The flip works. The engines relight reliably. Those were the difficult problems, and they're done. What's left is building the platform and integrating the legs. Still challenging, sure, but not impossible. The leaked documents show they're treating this as operational planning, not experimental research. They're not debating whether to try it. They're figuring out the fastest way to make it happen. With the foundation they've already built, drone ship recovery isn't an if question anymore. It's when. So why are drone ships better than just letting starships splash down? 
Because they complete the full reusability picture SpaceX has been building for a decade. The vehicle works. The technology exists. And watching impossible become routine is a pattern we've seen from them before. If this breakdown was helpful, subscribe to New Space Review. We dig into the technical side of space development here. Drop a comment with your take. Do you think they'll nail this on the first attempt? Or will it take a few tries to get right? And if you want to see what else Starship is capable of, click the video on your screen about Elon Musk's Nova Starship reveal and its direct moon landing approach. Thanks for watching.